Hi guys, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and I have some car boot sale buys to uh, show you today. There's one or two nice little pieces in this um, group and then the rest of it is pretty much work in stock. So, way to start. Um, start right in front of me. Here we have a late Victorian to early 20th century jug. I know, I said I wasn't buying any more. Uh, this one is almost nude, just tastefully using the blanket if you like to cover as privates. So it's a slightly later example. Hand painted. Typical late Victorian jug. And I think, yep, there's the price guys. It was a pound. It'll be on the market on Thursday for a fiver. I actually quite like this one. It's almost Art Deco. It is Art Deco. Cubist in shape, if you like, with these little cube or diamond patterns. Nice angulated handle. It's no maker's mark to it, just a mould number or pattern number of 480. But I quite like the jug. It's a nice design to the jug. You can hear Sandra and um, Bethany in the background, they're chopsing over the baby. Look at that handle. Sand! Sand! Shut up! She won't listen. Anyway, lovely condition and again was a pound. Right, um, this little piece here is English silver plate hand cut uh, pickle jar. It's lost the fork, but I got many, many, many forks, so I'll just dangle a little fork on there. It was two pound. The jar is quite nicely cut glass. Now this is, it won't be signed, this is quite an early example. It's hand sliced along the base, all this is hand cut, star cut frontal on the top and a ground in stopper for a real nice tight fit. So, no 100% of the make, I think it's James Dixon. So you got a nice English silver plate. As I've said, it was £2, let's be honest, it, once I put a fork on it, it's going to be 12 quid, no problem whatsoever. That's fine. Next we have a modern bohemian crystal decanter, good condition, not as large as most, nice cut pattern on it, and it was £3. It's not signed, therefore it doesn't go on the internet. If they're signed, I'll sell them as what they are. If they're not signed, you just can't get your, your decanters and I found. It's just too much glassware on there. But um, if it's signed, you can say it's Edinburgh Crystal or it's Waterford or so forth. Um, but when you just put a cut crystal decanter, the likelihood of you selling it is slim to nil. So that'll go out on the market for somebody who can, who can handle it, feel the weight and the quality. And you know, I'll get 8 to 10 quid for that. Here we have a vintage tin. Um, just shout it, I do. Shut up. That's all we could do. Come on, come and show her. Guess who's here, guys? Yeah, because no, just Lower, 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 lower. Careful, then. Careful. Alright, I'm not doing my crafts on my There she is, guys. She's awake. You're going to show the eyes. And we just realised today she's got blue eyes. Today is the very first day for her to open her eyes tidy and they're blue. Yay. Just like a mother, huh? Yeah, definitely. Right, she's got so. Eyes. Short and Mason, guys, is the make. And all these little animals going around here are star signs. So we have a little, what was it, Shorter Mason Storm Guide with star signs 
in tin, £1.50, it's going to be 12 quid. No problem at all. A little collectible one there. Next we have a horse martingale. Now, when you do a horse, some of these shire horses now for showing, they dress them with horse brasses and all sorts. Well, here, this martingale here is a commemorative one. It has two, four, six horse brasses, Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth, Silver Jubilee, Prince Charles, Princess Diana, and the Three Feathers. It's quite nice, however, nobody's going to buy that off me at a tenner or anything as it is. It cost me £1.50. Get this. I could put eight or ten quid on it and they won't even bid me. They'll run away. Yet I can take them off the leather and sell them a pound each and have six pound back out of a box for a pound each. It don't make sense to be honest with you. I would much rather have them on the original martingale and display them tidy on the side of a fire or something. I'll probably try it like that once or twice. Um, if somebody bites on them, great. If not, then I'll just split them off and sell them at a pound a piece like I normally do, guys. Next piece here we have a 1930s to 40s jug, but it, again, no maker's mark, just an English jug. It has a little cross, blue cross underneath. I'll show you that in just a second. The design is hand painted, looking at it. The figures are transfer, the rest of it is hand painted. So all this black, the tree, the mountains, all the scrolling is hand painted, but the figures are transferred with a bit of highlighting on the painting, and the tree at the back is hand painted. Probably 1940s, it cost me a pound. I'll show you the underside, guys. There's the little blue cross. It's probably just a Staffordshire company. Nothing special, it's going to go five or six quid again. It's neither here nor there. I quite like this piece. Now we have a piece of Silvac pottery. This is known as a wall pocket or a wall vase, and again, it was a pound. Mold number 2487 by Silvac. Hopefully, you can see that, guys. Some of these wall pockets can pull good money. Um, this one is quite common um, with the almost reed design. But if you can get some of the Art Deco wall pockets or wall masks, they can really pull top money. One site specializes on the internet just selling in the wall masks and the wall pockets. That's all she sells, and they're hundreds of pounds a piece. On this, oh, sorry, on her site, this piece would be up 35, 40 pounds. Probably lucky to get 15 or 20 for it. But nevertheless, it is still a nice little wall pocket. Um, and they are a bit more collectible than the run of the mill silverback. Next piece then, cost me £2. And we have a solid bronze lion with a lacquered finish. It's 20th century. It is what it is, guys. It's just a bronze lion. It is nothing special. But for two quid, I'll have a ten of profit on that. It'll be out for 12. It's quite nicely uh, cast. And will look nice. And the fact this bronze is good enough. Here, this come in with the horse brasses. It's a 1937 coronation mug by Abby Pewter. Let me see if I can capture the name for you on the light there. Abby Pewter, 50 pence, and it has a little medallion on the front for the 1937 coronation. 50 pence, guys, it's going to go for three quid. That is all it's going to be. Three quid on a stall, nothing spectacular. But you've got to have stall fillers, I suppose. This Yardley's Old English Lavender in a wicker pouch. 50p and it's never been opened. It came in with the um, soaps. I just didn't um, realise it was set, It was in the box separate, but come in with the soaps. I had um, a nice 20th century, early 20th century um, etched glass dish advertising one the other day full of different soaps. Well, I think this was in with it, and I took it out. But it's um, 
Old English Lavender, Yardley and Cole London, established in 1770. And it's them not they're still full. It's gonna be a couple of quid on the stock, guys, it's nothing. It's a bit of work in stock. Then we have an Ainsley commemorative cup. Queen Elizabeth II crowned in Westminster Abbey, June 2nd, 1953. It was a pound. It has all the dates, coronation dates for different uh, monarchs, mm -hmm. all the way from Harold in 1066, all the way through to Elizabeth in 1952. And it is produced by Ainsley China. And I done a little talk on Ainsley the other day. I think they were established uh, well, unless uh, I'm mistaken, they were established in 1775. Um, shockingly. So, nice bit of English bone china and in good condition. It was a quid, it's going to be a fiver. Another mug, guys. I'm going to take this off, see what it says. It was a pound. And this is going to be after the war, but is it after the First World War or the Second World War? Because it's got for freedom and right. Now I'm going to have to do a little bit of research. It's certainly a mug to commemorate the victory of the war, but it could be either World War One or World War Two. That'll be a, a nice collectible little mug for the car boot sale again for a fiver. Just, you know. A little wartime piece. Here we have a pair of Staffordshire dogs. I'm trying to see, are they 19th century? But I don't think they are. I think they're 20th century guys looking at them. To me, they're a pair of 20th century dogs, not 19th. They're small. They have plenty of wear and crackling and crazing and so forth. And they have the luck, but I don't think they are. But either way, they're not fortunes, they're 12 quid to pay. Even if they were 19th century, they wouldn't be 20 quid to pay, guys. The prices on Staffordshire has just dropped like crazy. Plummeted. This I absolutely love. I'm not sure if it's Cinderella and the Prince at the ball. It's clockwork, so it winds up here. Um, no maker's mark, would have been nice to have a nice shuko piece or something like that. But it's tin. Tin and plastic, is it? Nope. It's all tin. It's all tin. Tin clockwork, Cinderella dancing at the ball. This came in, i done a video the other day and I said to you I bought a couple of pieces and this was thrown in with it. What was it? I'm trying to think what it was. It was on the video where I had the Victorian footman and the Corgi toys and that. I had this on that day and I just forgot to put it in the video. I can't remember. It was in with something else it was. I can't remember what. However, really nice, interesting tin plate clockwork toy. It's going to go out maybe 12 or £15 pound on the market on Thursday. Final piece. No, it's not. I'm sorry. I got a couple more here. Right here we have a little bit of memorabilia. 21st of February 1952. The king lies in state at Westminster Hall, round his coffin. Oh, day in. So basically, this must have been when um, King George died. And then, of course, Queen Elizabeth then was coronation on 1953. So, quite an important newspaper, and I think it's an original one, guys. So, it's quite thick too. It cost me a pound. It's full of little adverts and things like that, and all that you chop it up. But it is quite nice, as in 
It's got an historical event. Oh, look at that sun, man. They were actually advertising new pieces for the coronation of the Queen, the new coronation. Uh, just quickly show you, you'll have to put up with the baby crying guys, sorry. Just a little advert but there, they were advertising a beautiful etched glass goblet for the coronation of the Queen. Never actually seen one. It's quite nice though. Made by craftsmen to celebrate the return of the monarch. So, I wouldn't mind having one of those etched goblets. Okay, so I'm going to rip it. So, it was a pound and it'll go out in my uh, ephemera box for a fiver, maybe eight pound. Next we have another box here, cost me a pound and it is full of national registration identity cards, um, photographs, I don't know where one is, uh, little labels and so forth. So you've got a lot of military photographs in here. Almost a Billy Elliot moment by here. Is it? No, he's not dancing. Where is it? Oh, wow. That's how they used to do PE in school, by the looks of it, guys. Look at that. So. Some nice interesting pieces in you guys. Um, just found a couple of photos here. Old photos of a zebra and elephants and so on. So it just goes to show that's probably the first time they'd ever seen those animals. Some really nice vintage photo photographs here. Some military, some travelling. The entire box have cost me a pound guys, really have. So I'll probably chuck 10 or 15 pounds on the entire box full and that covers everything. All the labels, the identity card, the photographs. That's a nice little package for 15 or 20 pounds. I don't envision a problem in selling that. Nicest piece of the day in these is this. We have a beautiful late 19th century, early 20th. English silver plate champagne bucket. Really, really nice piece. I can't see a bloody maker on it. And I've looked. Believe me, I've looked. Would be nice if it was silver. It's a couple of kilos here, but it's not a silver plate or Sheffield plate. It's in lovely condition. It's a nice size. It's a good. 14, 16 inches by 12 inches and 6 to 8 inches wide. And it's in lovely condition. Now, champagne bucket like this, I'm going to retail out for about 35, 40 pound. No problem at all. I paid two pound for it. Two whole pound. I'll be funny, there's probably four kilos of scrap brass here because EPNS is brass, silver on brass. If it's on copper, it's just as good. Um, but they normally say it's on copper. So, three kilos of brass, six pound of scrap, six, seven pound of scrap. And I paid two pound for it, guys. But I love the shape, this beautiful shape. Love all the fluting. That's a nice item. And uh, at Christmas time, with some ice in there and a couple of bottles, it's big enough for to hold a couple of bottles of wine. Somebody's going to really like that. That's going to fly out. I'm not going to struggle to sell that. But I'll be damned if I'm going to sell it to a dealer for a tenner for them to put 40 or 50 pound on it. My price on that one, even to trade, is going to be up 30 pound. Anyway guys, uh, some nice buys and some run of the mill working stock. Hopefully you've enjoyed having a look. If you have, I would appreciate a like and a share. You'll find me on Facebook. I have a page on the group Antiques Arena. You'll find me on eBay. You'll have to excuse me, these two over here are just staring at me and making me laugh. You'll find me on eBay, just run a search for Seller Antiques Arena Clearance. 
here and I have my own website antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com thanks for watching guys bye for now I'm gonna strangle you pay honest to god oh, <laughs> <I'm impressed. laughs>